The Sports Scouting Report with Lee Brickeen. Brought to you by Medines Collision Center in Baton Rouge. Take control, choose Medines. Gross Savant Lodge, south of Lake Charles, the true sportsman's paradise. Treads and Care Company in Central, the tires you need, the service you want. Harvey Auto in Shreveport, Bossier City, the name you have trusted for years. And Gage in Baton Rouge, get better connected with Gage. Here's your host, Lieber King. Welcome back. Uh, this is a sports scouting report. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. Our guest today is one of the great coaches out there that a lot of people in Louisiana might not realize he's in Louisiana. His name is Kurt Dole, coached with Nick Saban at LSU, uh, was on a national championship team at LSU, was there 2002-2003, uh, assistant head coach, uh, linebackers coach, and now currently with the Walker Wildcats in Louisiana. Coach, thanks for joining us. Well, hey, it's, I appreciate it, and it's great to be here. First question people would want to know is why Louisiana again? Uh, you back in Louisiana. People don't even know you're here today. They will, and but you've got a heck of a resume. You're over there with Chad Mahaffey at, at Walker, but what made you come back to, to Louisiana? Well, Lee, uh, when we were here back in the early 2000s, uh, both my daughters uh, – Basically, it's the last time our whole family was together, and both my daughters graduated from LSU, and uh, one uh, took off to California, and one stayed here, and uh, she's married and uh, very happily, and have two uh, beautiful grandchildren, so that's a good reason why we're back. There you go. Family always trumps where you live, you know, that's a, and uh, I wanted to, to mention that Coach Dole currently is at Walker High School. Um, he is... Uh, Big name resume over there with Coach Mahaffey. They got some big names. Doug Dotson's there. Uh, Doug coached at Como High School for a long time and sure. coached at Central High School, my alma mater at Central for a long time. And we'll get to Walker High School before we're, we're done. But I want to mention, Kurt, uh, tell everybody where you went to high school and where you were raised uh, to get to know Kurt a little bit. Well, I, I grew up in the Midwest in uh, Wichita, Kansas. And uh, I was very fortunate. Uh, I went to high school, uh, Wichita West, and uh, it had started out uh, early in my career in high school. <clears throat> Excuse me. We had uh, the uh, all one of the Hall of Fame high school coaches there by Eddie Crewall, and so from that point, uh, football was uh, very meaningful and uh, very productive for me. And gave me an opportunity to go to college and, and so forth. So grew up in Wichita, it's not, uh, Kansas is not quite the football state Louisiana is, but uh, fortunately I was on a very good team. A lot of great players come out of that state. Coach, was Barry Sanders a Kansas native? Yes, sir. He's from uh, Wichita. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very proud of Barry Sanders. He's, he's a great man. Great what about man. Gail Sayers? Was Gail Sayers from Kansas? He was from Omaha. Omaha, Nebraska. Nebraska. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But uh, well, Barry Sanders, one of the all time greats. I know that Coach Snyder did a great job, huh, Coach, at Kansas State for years. All, all time. He's one of the all time great. Uh, in my lifetime, before he got there, I think they had one winning season. And uh, obviously, what he's done with that program is phenomenal. I remember when Kansas State, Coach, you remember this, uh, when Nebraska used to beat them about seven to nothing prior to him. It was, it was brutal. <laughs> it was brutal. And it Barry was Switzer, brutal. remember Barry Switzer, what he would do at Oklahoma uh, to poor Kansas. And then he in Kansas State. But they, yeah, it's improved a lot. And they're doing well. They beat LSU in the bowl game, which was a interesting game. LSU had 29 players. Uh, yeah. Coach, um, coach uh, what was it like growing up as a football coach? Uh, did you get your start in Kansas by chance? Did you start out? Uh, uh, what I did was, yes, to answer your question, uh, I graduated from East Carolina, and then I came back, and uh, I had all these dreams of being a millionaire and all that, but uh, they soon fizzled out, and I went back to school and got my education degree to coach in high school, Okay. and uh, when I was doing that, uh, back then, Wichita State had football. And uh, I went in and uh, talked to the head coach, and he gave me an opportunity to be a volunteer and uh, try out to be a, like a student assistant. 
And fortunately, uh, that thing took off for me. I was very fortunate to have that opportunity. And uh, from there, I uh, left and went into uh, high school coaching in Texas. Okay. And back then, Coach, they didn't pay grad assistants uh, 100000 a year, huh? <laughs> back then, back then. Well, uh, there was, uh, I think my salary was like $160 a month. And that included everything. I had to pay for my own school, room, board, books, all that stuff. Wow. People needed to hear that. that that's <laughs> And those are the good old days, though, too. Uh, gas was pretty cheap. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got that right. We're, we're going to take a break. When we get come back, we're going to talk more to Coach Kurt Dole, who's currently at Walker High School, former LSU linebackers coach under Nick Saban. I want to ask Coach when we come back about his days at Texas A&M, uh, what it was like coaching in College Station, San Jose State, and Notre Dame the Irish, what it was like. He's coach spent eight years at Notre Dame coaching and see what it gets his thoughts about what that was like being a, a coach at Notre Dame. We'll be right back. Listen, whatever you're driving right now, Tommy Harvey wants it. Bring it in to Harvey Subaru, Lexus of Shreveport, Bossier City, or John Harvey Toyota. They're paying big bucks for all trades right now. They'll cut you a check right there. Tell them Lee sent you. Welcome back. I'm your host, Lee Burkeen. We have a great guest today. Appreciate coach joining us, Kurt Dole who's currently a, a coach at Walker High School, was at uh, with Nick Saban. And I, that, I, that's something I want to go ahead and talk about is that Coach Dole was at LSU 2002 to 2003, linebackers coach, assistant head coach. And um, I worked with Nick as a, I guess you say, a contract worker back in the day before Huddle. Uh, I would film games. I had a video company. And actually, Coach, he showed me what to buy, where to buy it, and what cameras to buy, and what he wanted. And you know how he is. He's right to the fact. And I met with him one time in five years, but I met with Dooley, Lance Thompson, who I know that you were neighbors with, you told me at LSU, yeah. D-line coach, and, uh, and Carl Dunbar later on, several other different coaches. But what was it like working for Nick Saban? Because you were with him early on at LSU before, you know, the, the, the seven, what is it? How many national championships now? Seven, does he have? Seven total? Is that a saying, yeah, and so you were with him uh, and just a short time, but what, what was your thoughts on working with, and what, what was your thoughts on LSU back then uh, during that time? Because LSU was trying to get things going. Well, first of all, I was, um, I've been very blessed with uh, being able to work some of the all-time great uh, college coaches and, and obviously NFL coaches. And uh, Nick gave, showed me, um, I learned a great deal from him. And uh, obviously he's uh, very attentive to detail. And uh, he but basically expected you to work as hard as he does. And uh, anyway, uh, there was a lot of great things that I learned that I felt helped me later on as I went in my coaching career. And uh, I appreciated that. Uh, linebackers at that time, Coach, uh, y'all had a pretty good crew. Uh, I want to say off the top of my head, Lionel Turner was one of them, maybe Lionel. Uh, well, Lionel's uh, Walker graduate. Walker, there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, one of the yeah. big names to come out. Chris Hawkins. Uh, uh, well, Eric Alexander was another one. And then uh, the year before the championship was Brady James. And so oh, there, there was some really good players. West Monroe High School. Uh, <laughs> Coach, I remember meeting him. And when I run into uh, Brady, I always bring it up. We, I went to a Wassman practice one day in, in Monroe. And I was with Brad Smalling's dad, uh, the big 6'8 lineman that was on the yeah. team when you were there. And Brad Smalling's dad said, you want to go catch Wassman practice? I said, sure. I want to go look at this young linebacker who's a sophomore. And uh, coach said, yeah, there he is, his sophomore, 6'2", 200. And he, I said, that's a good-looking kid. He said, yeah, he's the fastest kid on the team. I said, yeah. And then the next year, I remember Wes Monroe. You know, he was at yeah. Wes Monroe. Coach Jerry Arledge and, and the rest is history. And, and you're coaching him at LSU. Uh, what was it like to coach him? And I know that Trev Falk was there too. But what, what, what was it like, Coach, to coach that group with Eric Alexander and Lionel Turner? That was a good group. Well, they um, obviously they were very good workers. Uh, they, they were very uh, knowledgeable about football just because of all the different types of defense and, and things that Coach Saban implemented with our defense. And uh, Coach Muschamp, and uh, 
they uh, enjoyed working with them. God, they're good, good people. They really were and, and uh, very conscientious. You had a Texan and Eric Alexander from Port Arthur. Uh, Lionel was from Walker High School. Coach, did you think you'd be at Walker back then? You coaching a Walker kid, and, you know, <laughs> looking. <back. laughs> you know what? I, uh, I'll be honest with you. At that time, I didn't know where Walker was at. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're right. You're right. Um, so it, I'm sure it's, it's changed. It's uh, yeah dynamics now with the, how yeah. the growth is in this area, and, and yeah, uh, you know, obviously there's a new uh, new high school there and all that. So yeah, we're gonna talk about those uh, college buildings that Walker has to ask you about them. It's like a little mini college. It looks like Millsaps or Bellhaven. <laughs> Uh, coach, what was it like being at Notre Dame your eight years? You were at Notre Dame at a good time, and a lot of great coaches come through there. Obviously, everybody thinks of Newt Rockney and Eric Porsegan, and uh, Jerry Faust tried it a little bit from Cincinnati, Ohio, Moeller High School, um, and then Lou Holtz, uh, but, and the coaches that were there. And, and what, was your, what was your time at Notre Dame like for you? Well, uh, believe it or not, I grew up, uh, being a uh, Notre Dame fan. Okay. And uh, I remember very vividly uh, listening. Back then, the TV wasn't quite as big because it's been a while. Yeah, but yeah, listening yeah. on the radio on Saturday afternoons and the games and uh, go going up, uh, you know, it was basically that or the University of Kansas and uh, were my two schools. But uh, getting out into coaching and having the different opportunities that again i was very fortunate with and having the chance to go there uh was uh was somewhat of a dream and uh it's a great school obviously and a lot of good qualities about that um the football part is uh was fun the recruiting was difficult because you're nationwide but uh, a lot of good things there uh just as any place there's a lot of great memories there's some things not so great yeah I want to ask you, we're going to take a break. I want to ask when we come back, Coach, your thoughts on the hire with Kelly at LSU when we come back. And uh, since the Notre Dame connection, because he was there a little bit longer than you were, a little over 11 years, I believe, Kelly was at Notre Dame, which is a long time. At yes, any, it is. Um, especially that, that school. We'll be right back with more Coach Kurt Dole, and we're going to be talking about the Walker Wildcats, our last two segments, the great facilities they have, Coach Mahaffey, the staff they have there. Doug Dotson, a former head coach, also like said, Kurt Dole, our guest today. We'll be right back. If you need a paint job or repairs to your vehicle, go see Medine's Collision Center located in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Kincaid Avenue. The number to call is 357-7983. That's 357-7983. Your Baton Rouge Accident Advisors. Welcome back. You're watching the Sports Scouting Report uh, statewide with uh, – Lee Burkeen, I'm your host. Our guest is Kurt Dole, currently at Walker High School. Our last two segments are going to be saved for the Wildcats. We're going to ask Coach about the defense and what he's a part of there with Coach Mahaffey. But in this segment, I want to talk about, Coach, when you were recruiting uh, for Saban at LSU, you recruited two famous kids, well, grown-ups now, but kids then. And you had East Texas. You had uh, Matt Flynn you were recruiting out of uh, Tyler, Texas. Yeah. And then, and then t uh, you also had Jacob Hester at Evangel Christian. And I think you were talking to me off the break out there, and, and it's very interesting. Those were two interesting recruiting stories I remember because the quarterback recruiting at that time was Jamarcus Russell, Robert Lane, Matt Flynn. And I know you could sign all three. Uh, what was that like with Flynn? Because you end up getting Jamarcus and Matt. And, and then Robert was coming out of Neville. But uh, what was it like recruiting uh, Matt, a great guy from Tyler, Texas? Well, he, uh, I, I, if he'll remember, I told him he was a throwback because uh, <laughs> he was a uh, type of player, very competitive, obviously. Um, as, as you watched him, he played uh, hurt. Um, he, he was one of those guys that he, you know, winning was very, very important to him. And, he had a great uh, example by his father. His father was a quarterback and, and uh, at Baylor University. And uh, so they, uh, you know, kind of grew up and he was going to be a quarterback. And Matt, Matt uh, made his commitment to LSU and uh, never really 
Yeah, I, I shouldn't say never wavered, but uh, even when Jamarcus said he was coming, uh, you know, then Robert Lane was in and he was out, you know, that kind of stuff. He, he never wavered. And as you can tell, he stayed here and, and worked through uh, all the different uh, situations and was a quarterback for a national championship team. That was a, a great year with him to uh, Dixon in the end zone on a couple of catches against uh, Ohio State. Uh, yeah. To win it all. Coach uh, Hester, you had Shreveport. And yeah. I, lo I love going to Shreveport, and, and I know that you like Shreveport, but you said Hester was a heck of a soccer player. People might not have realized that. I didn't know that. Well, he, he was uh, – I just remember freezing my tail off uh, one, one year uh, listening – watching him and uh play soccer was very successful and uh it was something i think that was also helpful for him as he played football because he's changed the direction and as you saw with when he's playing running back uh very successful coach when y'all signed jacob i mean he had a little different something to him uh, and he he made some tough runs at lsu those third fourth down ones and he'll always be re remembered by the lsu fans of the guy that wanted the ball when the game was on the line, but did y'all see that when y'all signed him that he was going to be that kind of player? Well, in my opinion, yes, because you, you could see it, it mattered to him about being competitive, uh, regardless of what he did. And he was very competitive in the soccer field, football field, and it was the same thing with Matt. And all that stuff was important for him, him to do the very best he could. And uh, you knew that he was in, in for the duration when he said he was in. Speaking of Notre Dame, you spent eight years there. You grew up a fan of them in Kansas. You're from Kansas. But um, Coach Kelly, what do you think of the new hire at LSU? He leaves Notre Dame winning, which never happens. No one leaves Notre Dame winning. Uh, they usually get fired like Holtz or, uh, you know, unless it's Parsegan, right, or Newt Rockney, But nobody leaves Notre Dame winning. Well, I, I think uh, in uh, this era, uh, I agree with you what you're saying. Uh, obviously, Coach Holtz left uh, being the being close to being the winningest coach in Notre Dame history, but he, he stepped down through different reasons. Uh, from that point, that yes, you're right. There was coaches that were leaving because of losing. Uh, coach Kelly did a marvelous job to, to be there at that at Notre Dame for 11 years is through all the uh, – different dynamics, I guess you would say, uh, did a heck of a job. Yeah. Uh, people say, can he win in the South? And I think that's a little overrated, in my opinion. What do you think about that, Coach? Because, I mean, sure. you know, it doesn't matter where you're from, right? I mean, the football is football. Uh, well, I think the, the staff that he's hired is a great staff. And uh, there's a lot of uh, Louisiana connections where – I think the people of Louisiana realize that he's he wants to draw from within the state. And uh, I think he's a very good coach. He's very well organized, detailed. And uh, I think there'll be a lot of success. I really do. I always tell people, Coach, if you're worried about where Kelly's from, Saban was not from the South either. He was from Western yeah. uh, PA area over there. So well, uh, he did. He did. Those, those are fighting words, Lee. He's from West Virginia. West Virginia. That's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He'll, he'll let me know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Him, him and Jimbo are both from West Virginia. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of Jimbo, and I don't want to talk much about it, and we'll do it hilariously, but just shortly. But what do you think of NIL in a, in a nutshell, Coach? What's your thoughts on it? With what's going well, on? Well, I, I think it's something that's going to be here. I don't think it's going to go away. Uh, I think there'll be some refinement of how the, uh, they call them collectors, are done. Uh, in terms of managing the players, um, it, it's, uh, I think it's very beneficial to the players. Uh, I think there might be some repercussions for some other people in terms of the other sports. And uh, it'll be uh, interesting to see how it works out. Well, now the next two segments, Coach, it's all Walker Wildcats. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to talk to Coach about Walker. I had, I had a chance to go to a game last year against Bastrop. I watched the Bastrop game on the sidelines with Coach Bradshaw from Bastrop. And Coach remembers Reuben Randall and D. Benton and all those guys that he coached. Went to LSU and Auburn. But we'll be back with more of Coach Dole, Kurt Dole. Appreciate him taking the time to join us today on our podcast TV show today. We'll be right back.
Be sure to take your car and truck for all your tire needs to Treads and Care Tire Company located in Central. The number to call is 331-8144. Family owned and operated since 1971. That's Treads and Care Tire Company. Welcome back. You're watching the Sports Scouting Report uh, with Lee Burkeen. I'm your host. Our guest is Kurt Dole, big-time linebacker coach, one of the best linebacker coaches. And, Coach, I wanted to tell you this. I've never told you this, but from afar, not knowing you personally, I've always kept up with you and thought you were one of the best linebacker coaches in the game. Um, uh, just want to mention that. I always followed you. And when you were with Saban, uh, I mean, y'all had a heck of a – and we'll start with this because I was going to do it at the end of the show, but – the 2003 National Championship, before we get to Walker High School, what was that like for you? That was the first National Championship since 1958 for LSU uh, and being with Nick. And that one year you're there, you win, you get a ring. I mean, what was that like for you that one year? Well, it was uh, kind of a, a, a fantasy dream, really, uh, going through uh, when, uh, when I went to Notre Dame. And for eight years, I thought that's where I'd win a national championship, but obviously that didn't happen. And then when I came to LSU and saw the, the different talent that they had and the, just the, the importance of the football, um, it, it was really a neat experience. It really was. And uh, all the coaches did a heck of a job. And, and uh, we kind of worked through that one loss and uh, great things happened for us. Uh, going into Walker High School, so now you're coaching high school football, and Jace made a great point uh, off the air. You coach high school now, you're pro with the Broncos, Denver Broncos. Uh, one of my favorite teams, Coach. So L I was an Elway fan, and then uh, I know <laughs> Peyton Manning did a good job after, and they've had some great, great history there. Uh, quarterback Morton was pretty good back in the day, Greg Morton. Um, coach, you all three levels you've coached high school, college, pro, and now back to high school. What, what has been your best, uh, I guess, opinion of the whole process and what it's been like to do all three? Well, I, I think that uh, each situation, uh, I think it's a great situation for young people. I think they grow. I think it helps them later in their lives. And, and just to have a small part in that is something that's very rewarding. And uh, obviously when it's in the NFL, it's all about money. Uh, and, uh, but at the same time, the relationships that you can build with those players are important. Uh, so their productivity continues to grow and they can obviously uh, get a bigger contract. Yeah. So yeah. They, they all have benefits and, uh, um, I think they all want to have some type of structure and discipline, uh, and which helps them as they go on. You're currently at Walker High School. I know the Wildcats are happy to have you. Uh, I know Chad Mahaffey is really happy to have you. And uh, I know Chad was a great coach at U High, won state championships there. He's trying to get Walker uh, there as well. Very close, has done a great job there. But what is it like being at Walker? Uh, the AD there, uh, the principal Pierre is a great guy. We talked about that visionary man um, as the principal of the high school. But and I've been I've taken a tour to the buildings in the last couple of years. But what do you think of the, the principal there and his vision for that school, which is to me incredible? Well, uh, he's he's awesome. As Mr. Saint Pierre has done everything he can to give uh, basically all all the students an opportunity to be successful in, in whatever walk of life it wants to be in. And you can see that by uh, all the different uh, opportunities, whether it be in, uh, in management of restaurants, uh, you know, the, the agricultural part of it, the mechanical part. Uh, he knows that uh, the more school uh, related activities they can get young people in, that uh, it's, it's gonna help them uh, be more successful in their their life after high school but he's uh he's awesome one of the few schools where they have a bank in the school they yeah either the rest they got a pizza place in the school i don't know credit union all kind of stuff in the school coffee shop coffee you know? shop <laughs> i can't keep up with pierre uh yeah. got a got a tv production class exactly um and now coach what's your thoughts on coach mahaffey working with chad and Young coach has accomplished a lot in a young career so far. He's he's uh, 
very, very, very hard worker. And uh, he is, he takes on a lot of different things and wears a lot of different hats, but uh, he's done a great job of uh, uh, building this program and, and um, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it. Um, staff, y'all got a great staff coach. What do you think of the staff at Walker? A uh, lot of, a lot of experience there. Well, and you're exactly right. And uh, a number of them on offense have been with Chad for a number of different years and places. And then uh, this will be the second year I'll be with uh, Doug Dotson, who's the defensive coordinator. And uh, we got a good group of guys. We really do. You're like the John Robinson of Walker High School, huh, Coach? Like John was. <laughs> John was like the uh, the consultant of all people there on the staff and the uh, the, the the guy, man. Uh, but we got one segment left, Coach. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about Walker. Talk about some of the players that have come in. Brian Thomas, who's at LSU now, might get your thoughts on Brian. And then you've got some. They've got some good-looking players coming up at Walker next year. This year, I mean, uh, with spring just finishing, um, summer starting, and uh, and then fall, the three seasons of football, that, and then off season. We'll be right back with more Coach Kurt Dole, Walker High School. We'll be right back. Grosavon Lodge, the true sportsman's paradise. Grosavon Lodge has fresh and saltwater fishing, alligator hunting, waterfowl hunting, and echo tours located south of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Give them a call at 337-337. 598-2357. That number to call again is 337-598-2357 and have the time of your life. Welcome back. You're listening to the Sports Scouting Report. I'm your host, Lee Burkean. Our guest is Kurt Dole, a famed linebackers coach. Been everywhere, Denver Broncos, Notre Dame, East Carolina, LSU, National Championship 2003, currently Walker High School. He's with his family in uh, Louisiana now, back home in Louisiana. Can I say home, Coach? It's home now, huh? Uh, and we, we closed on our home uh, two months ago. All right. High five, Coach. Uh, yeah. Uh, coach is back here. He's at Walker High School. Before we go back to Walker, um, Coach, your thoughts when you were coaching in the 90s and early 2000s in college ball, you'd sign a kid. Let's say you'd sign a linebacker out of Tyler, Texas, and he's a – He's not – back then there was no stars, right, back in the 90s. And he's, he's just a D1 guy, and you sign him, and you tell him, look, you got to learn the defense before you play, which might take a year. And back in the 90s, I remember growing up that kids would stick around at least three years, maybe leave that fourth year. But now today, uh, kids aren't even getting the playbook. They don't know the defense yet. They want to play right away, and they're not ready. And they're leaving earlier than ever before. What's your thoughts on the, uh, the new mentality of – well, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, um, but there's there's very little patience nowadays. And a lot of the rules in the different states have even made it easier for the young man to transfer because there's no, uh, like in Florida, you can, you can live in Miami and go to school in Jacksonville. And there's no repercussions from that. And uh, I think a lot of times uh, a young man's cheating himself because uh, he needs to stick it out and overcome some things. And uh, that's why I was so mad. We were talking about uh, Matt Flynn. I, I was very proud of Matt, the way he stuck things out, and great things happened for him. And I think a lot of times that would happen to a lot of other players as well. And, and I'm going to tell you what, God has blessed him in the NFL when he played. He oh, yeah. Like Ten games yeah. and made a few mil. I mean, he did good. He did really yeah, good. He, did. he was there with, there with Aaron Rodgers, had a clipboard when Aaron maybe got hurt and was doing really well there. Uh, old Matt, man, and his Baton Rouge – uh, I think he married a Louisiana girl. He's in Louisiana living. Um, Coach Walker High School, they'll have some talent coming back. Uh, offensively, I know there's a lot of playmakers. Uh, Y'all got some tall receivers. Um, Ja'Cory Thomas and Warren Young, a couple of guys coming back I saw last year. What, how, how does the team look through spring? Uh, uh, I know summer's going to be even a different stage of getting better. Right. But what, what do you think of the, where the team's at from the end of the season through spring? Well, I think, I think there's a lot of really good things that have happened in terms of what Coach Mahaffey did with uh, some things in the offseason for uh, leadership and accountability and those type of things. And I think it's really helped our team. And uh, it basically showed a lot uh, when we had our, our spring game against St. James and Plaquemine. Uh, I thought there was a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of great effort. 
now we're not perfect by no means, but uh, there was some really good things that happened and we look forward to the summer just making it even better. As you being a linebackers coach, uh, most of your career, you got all these spread offenses in high school now. I know that when we were, I was growing up, there was very few spread. I played high school ball, it was power eye. We didn't throw the ball maybe twice. Um, I wish my coach would have, but uh, we ran the ball all the time. But now, every, how hard is it preparing high school? Because you don't have all the, you know, the, the, the pieces all the time to play the defense with these spread teams now. Well, I, th I think what, what's taking place is uh, the spread offenses are almost dominant in high school now. And so, uh, you know, people are basically getting their defenses adjusted to that. And then uh, all the different, uh, like when you get into the wing tees and all that kind of stuff, that, that's kind of a, a new thing that you have to teach them as you go along. But with the summer that you have in the state of Louisiana, the opportunities to practice, it gives you an opportunity to have a diverse defense uh, and one that you can adjust and uh, take care of some things. What I like, Coach, you get your thoughts, those hybrid linebackers now in high school. You know, you didn't have the hybrids in the 80s and 90s. <laughs> and now you got the hybrids in college that are sought after. Yeah. You know, those 5'10", 185 guys that are 4'5", five, five, that can cover inside because the fifth guy is always a tough guy in college now. But now high school, you're seeing a lot of – hybrid guys that are linebackers slash safety slash nickel corners. Um, exciting. I think it's exciting because you're just seeing more athletes on the field and defense. Do you agree with, with that? No, no question. That's, that's why they get in spread offenses to spread you out and isolate on somebody that athletically can't match with you. And uh, that's why you see basically what we used to call dime defense where you have six DBs, that's that's what you're seeing a lot now because of the spread offenses. And if you have a six, three, 200 pound safety, that's a bonus in high school. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I agree with you there. A down downhill outside backer slash safety coming down. Um, you were talking about that OP Walker team back in the days, coach, when we were talking with Frank Wilson, when you were recruiting at LSU and Nick was was talking and signed a bunch of players off that team. Uh, I thought the best DB I've ever seen play was on that team, Daryl Johnson. He was a safety uh, who signed with LSU. Never played at LSU, but he had 180 tackles and 12 interceptions that senior year, five pick sixes in yeah. that one season. And uh, But that same team had LSU signed Dominique Cooper, a yeah. linebacker, one of your linebackers, and also yeah. uh, they had a receiver that signed with LSU, Craig Davis, that went the first round. Um, but is there is there a high school that sticks out to you when you were at uh, besides Evangel recruit Jacob Hester that you just enjoyed watching a lot back in those days uh, in 03? Uh, you know, obviously West Monroe. Uh, they had they had some really good teams and really good players uh, from the state of Louisiana. Uh, you know, the area that I recruited, uh, I would say that those two were the ones that I enjoyed the most: Evangel and West Monroe. Uh, I'm sure hot in Louisiana, Bossier City, Natchitoches should enjoy hearing us talk about <laughs> uh, Bossier yeah. High and uh, Booker T. Washington, Huntington, Woodlawn, and Shreveport. You hit all those schools, uh, Coach. Yeah, the, the Woodlawn, there's an interesting uh, recruiting story when I was at a different university, but we won't get into that one. Okay. <laughs> was that Texas? No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No comment. Uh, no, they uh, – and uh, another school over there, Captain Shreve, they're loaded this year. Uh, yeah. Just to give you an idea how Shreveport's improved, Coach, since you were recruiting there, they didn't have any D1 players during that time, Captain Shreve. Last year they had 12 players signed. Oh, this wow. Year, this year they're going to have 13 kids possibly signed this year. And that's Captain, awesome. Captain that Shreve. Really, that's awesome. Really changed a lot. Um, and then Parkway obviously wasn't like that in 03. They didn't have all those – Terrace Marshall's playing when you were recruiting, huh, Coach? No, sir. No, sir. They did not. <laughs> coach, any thoughts to any high school coaches out there that are watching? Uh, any guys trying to get in the business? Any any advice to a young man that's getting out of college, getting a college degree, wanting to be a coach now? Because it, it, it's really it's it, we need coaches. We need guys coming up coaching high school football, and not just to go college. But any thoughts on the on young guys that are watching? 
Well, I, I think uh, like in anything, uh, you know, it's not easy getting started, but if you have a passion for what you're doing, uh, like I don't feel like I've really had a job for the last whatever, 40 years. Uh, it's something that's very rewarding. Uh, sometimes uh, you're not going to make the millions of dollars that uh, some of the other guys are, but uh, there's other things that uh, as you see a young man become a a uh, man become a husband, a father. It's very rewarding. Final question. Was Barry Sanders the best running back ever? Uh, you got it. He is. <laughs> I never say that because you're from Kansas. He's so <laughs> from my hometown. Man. From your hometown too, man. Um, yeah. Coach, thanks for uh, taking the time with us today. Uh, don't hang up yet. I'm going to end the show. Uh, go to our website, lafootballmagazine.com. You can go to YouTube to watch the show, or you can go wherever you get your podcast. We're on Podbean, uh, Heart Radio carries it. We've got several people that carry it, or our website, lafootballmagazine.com. We'll see you on Monday and next week. We also have Blake Shapin, the quarterback from Baylor High School, ba Baylor University in Waco, Texas. Blake Shapin that played at Evangel Christian in Shreveport. Uh, we'll see you on Monday. Gage has served Louisiana for over 40 years. Let Gage create a custom-tailored solution for your business and become your partner in technology. Give them a call today at 225-753-4243 and help your business get better connected with Gage. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.